Uh, hello, uh, my name is Lindsay Burnett and I am here in Korea for one year researching landscape architecture at Seoul Taehakyo. All right, so my presentation is looking at sustainability in landscape architecture. So I wanna talk about how we can increase cultural identity and also uh, sustainability through landscape design. So I'm asking the question how we can merge scientific analysis um, with more cultural studies and design and art um, to create a more sustainable and more culturally grounded landscape. But first, um, you might be wondering what I mean when I say landscape architecture, or what landscapes I'm talking about. So, very broadly speaking, landscape architecture is the design of outdoor and public spaces um, to achieve environmental and social and or aesthetic outcomes. So these are some examples of landscape architecture, specifically in Seoul, that you probably many of you are familiar with. The Han River Project is a newer project opening up the waterfront. Um, Seoul Nudo Park is an example of landscape architecture taking a previous uh, landscape and making it into something new. So taking a, a water treatment plant and making it into a new park where people can enjoy nature and there are many different ecosystems but reusing an old landscape. And then landscape architecture also deals with preservation and the rest restoration of heritage. So things like Namdaemun and um, Seoul Fortress Wall um, were able to restore old sites and make them more usable today. So landscape architecture influences us in many, many ways. Um, if you just think about it, we're walking on the landscape every single day. Um, the food that we eat obviously comes from the landscape and the resources that we use comes from this landscape too. Um, and then it's also in our uh, commute from home to school, we interact with the landscape and there are many elements that make it uh, more pleasant, such as trees and parks. And those are very important for the livability of a city. So landscape architecture plays a huge role in the future of um, basically humans on Earth. It can have a big role in climate change and preventing global warming. It can also, like I said, be part of um, just the livability and how we go about our daily lives, making it more pleasant when we walk down the street. Um, it also is a way of preserving traditions and cultural heritage, something that I'm really interested in in Korea. So they have, you have such an um, ancient history that you can preserve through the landscape. And then, like I mentioned, of course, our food comes from this landscape. So we'll go back to this question. It's something that we ask a lot in, during my studies, and it's something that I've been studying here in Korea. So we can um, use science and design, we can kind of combine them through these four steps. Research, analysis, and then building a concept, and then starting to design. And in my class, I've been doing this in a case study of Gangnamgu. And Gangnamgu is of course known for its skyscrapers, um, its nightlife, it's uh, fancy restaurants, all of that. But we started to look at Gangnam in a different way, through maps. And so we basically mapped, these are just a sample of some of them, but we found maps um, of the history of Gangnam from hundreds of years ago. Also land use, so looking at where the houses are, where the schools are, um, hospitals, all that. Um, we looked at the vegetation, meaning the plants, that exist in Gangnam um, and seeing you know, where there's just pavement and streets or where there's actually plants and water can seep through. 
Then we looked at the water patterns and the soil, the earth, um, and then the potential vegetation, which is something that will come up in the analysis. So we then an analyzed these maps. Um, and Korea is really, really amazing because it has documented its soil from before um, all the skyscrapers were built in Gangnam. We have, we have a lot of information about what the soil was like and what there's many different types of soil. So we were able to uh, make this soil map and then from that we could make something called a potential vegetation map. And this is a very important map because it means basically we can tell what plants would do best in this soil, in this region. And that's really great because then we can make these amazing, we can make uh, plant, plants that are really going to do well in these regions instead of having to maintain them and um, have a lot of human input and extra water, they can survive on their own and therefore it's much more sustainable because we can plant these plants and then let them be. So we also analyzed a couple of other things. We looked at, um, let's see, pointer. so we looked at these water maps down here and this is showing the Han River and this is from 1970 and it used to be very curvy and more natural. But you can see humans impact here in the later years from 2000, um, we've changed the river line. So we really have a huge force on nature. And it's really important to remember that, that we can control this landscape. And so we need to be conscious of the way that we're controlling it. So as landscape architects, we start to use this information to design a new landscape that's more in touch with the natural landscape. So this is just one example of what we've done. Um, we started looking at these maps using the soil map and the vegetation map. So these ones here, we came up with this idea of creating a green belt in Gangnam. It would connect different areas of Gangnam. And we found that in Gangnam, there's also this village, maybe you've heard of it, called Goryang. So in English, we call it the Nine Dragons Village. Um, and it's way different from the rest of Gangnam. It's, um, people live in very small, uh, handmade houses. And it's, it's nothing like the skyscrapers that you'd see in the rest of the area. So we had to start considering how we would redesign this landscape um, around the people and the culture, um, the people who are living there. So this is just a sample of some of the things that we do. So we started planning a green belt that would work around these ideas and incorporate the livelihood of the people living in Goryang with the people living in the rest of Gangnam in these large buildings. So in sum, I want to, let's see, yeah, come back to this question of how we can use science um, and incorporate it into the design of a sustainable landscape. So of course we use science already in landscape architecture um, so that we're able to build whatever we want, wherever we want. But we're proposing a new way to use science in landscape architecture, which is to use it to analyze such things as the soil and the natural environment. Um, and therefore create more sustainable ways of connecting with the landscape and with culture. Um, and through this, we can create a more sustainably and culturally grounded landscape. So thank you so much.